So now we'll move on to talking about SN1 reactions. And S still stands for substitution and N for nucleophilic, but now the one for unimolecular rather than bimolecular like an SN2. So, and the unimolecular refers to two things. It refers to only one reactant involved in the slow step of the reaction. And that also indicates that the overall rate law is gonna be first order. So one thing to note, SN1 and SN2, the one and two never refer to the number of steps. S, most SN2 reactions have a single step and all SN1 reactions will have more than one step. So again, SN1 and SN2, the one and the two definitely don't refer to the number of steps. So let's take a look at our SN1 reaction here. So we're still gonna have the leaving group leave and we're still gonna have the nucleophile attack. We're just gonna do it in two separate steps instead of in the same step as was done in SN2. And in the first step, the leaving group leaves here. So, and that forms a carbocation. And that is the most important thing to consider here. Uh, I told you with SN2, I want you to always associate that with backside attack. With SN1, I want you to associate it with carbocation formation. It's often all about the carbocation. So carbocations are not stable. This is a highly endothermic step. It's definitely the slow step in the reaction, the one with the greatest activation energy. Uh, and the more stable carbocation we can form, the faster this reaction will generally go. Uh, in this case, once we form this carbocation, now the nucleophile can come and attack, i.e. attach. So, and that'll finish off this reaction. So it's gonna be at least two steps. We'll find out most of them are actually gonna be three, but it's gonna definitely be at least two steps. Uh, if we look with only the substrate, the alkyl halide general being involved in the slow step, uh, it's the only one showing up in the rate law. The nucleophile does not show up in the rate law at all, only the substrate for SN1. So you double the substrate concentration, you double the rate. Uh, let's take a look at a more specific example here. So there's one down below here. I've got T-butyl bromide, and in the first step of the SN1 reaction, bond of bromine's gonna break, leaving group's gonna leave, and we're gonna form a carbocation. So notice the carbocation is no longer sp3 hybridized, it's sp2 hybridized. And there's the bromide that left. So, and now water is gonna come and attack, i.e. attach to the carbon with a positive charge. Now the arrow we're drawing here goes to the carbon, not to the positive sign here. So sometimes you can't get around it, but you should be drawing the arrow specifically to the carbon, not to the positive sign uh, listed there. And when we do so, we're gonna get this lovely intermediate here. So there's our second step, nucleophile is now attached. So however, we're not done yet. So when you end up with an oxygen with three bonds and a positive charge, this is very reminiscent of hydronium, which is an oxygen bonded to three hydrons and a positive charge. And this thing is a comparably acidic to hydronium as well. And being a good acid, whatever our solvent is, we're gonna have another molecule involved in doing another proton transfer reaction to finish this off. So our solvent in this case is water and another water molecule is gonna come along. We'll draw it in if we need it and it's gonna deprotonate. So just a simple proton transfer reaction. And since hydrogen can only make one bond, the old one has to break. And that'll get us to our final substitution product here in this case. So we'd also form a molecule of hydronium. So when water deprotonates, but our big substitution product here is the T-butanol. Cool, so three steps in this case. And like I said, uh, all SN1 reactions are gonna be at least two, but most of the ones we'll look at will end up being three. So again, SN1 reactions are all about carbocation formation, and sometimes we use silver nitrate to kind of help that carbocation form here. So that's AgNO3. Uh, in the first step of this reaction, the bromine would be breaking off and leaving, so the leaving group leaves, and that would result in our carbocation. So in addition to that carbocation, we'd also form a bromide ion. Now this step is highly endothermic, but it's also highly reversible, and so maybe bromide just comes back and reattaches and we get back to having our reactant. It's kind of like, I don't know if you've been in one of those relationships where you break up and you get back together and you break up and you get back together. Maybe that could kind of happen here. Well, if we add silver ions into the solution, so it turns out silver and all the halides, AgCl, AgBr, AgI, they're all very insoluble. And so we're gonna form AgBr here, a very insoluble precipitate. And this down arrow here refers to the fact that it's a solid precipitate, it falls out of the solution. So in this case, that prevents bromine from reattaching to the carbocation and greatly enhances uh, carbocation formation. So if you see silver nitrate, there's a good chance you're trying to form a carbocation, good indicator you might be doing an SN1 reaction.